So hello and welcome back to Strathpeffer Junction. For those of you who saw my last video, which was a, a video update, you'll have noticed that uh, I had to send my computer away to get fixed for the third time. Uh, but anyway, it's back now, so I'm trying to plough through uh, a number of bits of footage and get them edited up into videos, and there's a wee bit of a backlog. But anyway, today's video is going to be a, a fairly quick overview at my brand new uh, decoder tester, uh, programming track, and rolling road. Um, now, I'm not going to go through absolutely every step that it took to make it, uh, but I'm going to have a look at some of the key steps, uh, some of the techniques and approaches I did, how I wired it up, uh, and a wee bit at the end on just using it. Um, but the basic principle is I had a whole load of different testers and uh, you know, a wee sprog unit and other things that I've used for quite a long time now for testing decoders and trains, things when I've converted to DCC, that kind of stuff. But every time that I came to use them, I had to get them out of the box, wire them up, use them, take things to bed. It just became a total nightmare. Cables got all tangled up and all the rest. So I thought it would be better to have a little board that has everything connected in place and all I need to do is plug in the power supply and the connector of choice. So whether I'm using my lock programmer for lock sound chips, uh, whether I'm using the, the Sprog for CV programming um, and uh, whether I'm using, say, a DC or a DCC input from... Um, from a controller and then whether I'm in local testing or out of local chip testing. So this is the board anyway um, and uh, I'm going to have a, a wee look now, a few clips of, with a bit of a talk over just the different steps um, of, of putting it all together. Um, but once I've done that I'll come back at the end and just show you it in action and also some of the specifics to do with the, the rolling road um, which has solved my long running pro problem of these DCC concepts, rolling road modules falling over or being a real pain to use. Anyway, right, so back to the beginning. So, um, what I've done is I have got a sheet of uh, plywood. This is birch ply, but um, you, don't, uh, you don't need to use something like this. It's just an off cut. Um, this is about uh, 10 or 12 mils thick. Um, so what I'm going to do anyway is to uh, lay all these out on it uh, in the order that I want uh, and I have also cut a couple of lengths of track uh, to the right uh, to the right length which will be fixed in. Now if you're doing this um, you could uh, do one double O gauge and one um, N gauge if you want and certainly the way that I'm setting this up it will be very easy to switch one out if you want um, but I'm going to have two O gauge and one of them will be uh, the rolling road so that'll be like this uh, and then the other one will just be a plain bit of track and uh, they will be um, in parallel so whatever whatever's feeding this will also be feeding that so that enables me for example to uh, program an HST power car and the dummy car with the same uh, address if I wanted to do that all at the same time uh, or um, a DBSO if I want to put the DBSO in this track I can put the class 47 or whatever on this track uh, and give them the same address so anyway um, I will move on to arranging how I want it, marking the holes, and then I'm just going to drill some quick holes, and then I will take this uh, board up to my workshop and I'll route out the back of it so the cables can run behind. But we'll come on to all that in just a minute. Okay, so that's us up at the workshop, and I've put the wood into the pillar drill. I've got it clamped down, and I'm just drilling out all of the, uh, the holes that we marked out earlier so that we can feed the wires down to the underside of the board uh, to the area that we'll have routed out. And talking of routing out, um, I marked out the area that I wanted to, to route out so that it would coincide to where all the components were, and then I moved on to the uh, router. So for those of you on headphones, turn them down now. So I uh, routed out the area, I just did it by hand. Normally I would probably use uh, some framework and guides to do it neat, but this is all going to be hidden, so it doesn't really matter. So uh, I did the more delicate parts first, like that wee finger there, and once I'd done that, I just routed out all the rest of the material. Um, and uh, I routed out a wee bit more than I needed just to be on the safe side. And just one thing to mention about routers and all the power tools that I'm using, of course, be really careful of you using them. Use eye protection, ear protection, and all the rest. And if you're under 18, get your parents to help. Anyway, that was that wee tricky bit done, and the rest I just routed out quickly off camera. And as if by magic, that's all routed out. So not the neatest job in the world, but this will all be hidden, so it, uh, it doesn't matter too much. But anyway, plenty of space there for all the wiring. 
Okay, so the other thing that I did when I was up in the workshop was uh, cutting the acrylic sheet to size. So I just measured this to be very slightly less than the space between the roller bearings on the DCC Concepts rolling road modules. Um, and once I'd uh, scored and marked there with uh, the set square, I got the table saw fired up. So I chose to use clear acrylic 6mm, uh, but you could use any colour you want, uh, but 6mm was what I felt uh, worked best. And there we have it, so that's everything finished in the workshop, so back to the house. Okay, so some time has passed, the woodworking is behind us and we're back in the house. Um, really what I turned my attention to now is just all the soldering. Um, I'm not going to do a wiring diagram for it because it totally depends on what you want to do, how many tracks you have, how many decoders and so on, but it's not that complicated. Uh, mainly it is just soldering switches and track and other bits and pieces together. Remember to use heat shrink over the top of any solder joints just to prevent any so uh, shortering out. Anyway, the other thing, as I say, is to um, solder on the switches. I decided to go for three-way switches because so, I had three different things, but you might want to go for two-way switches uh, if that's all you've got. I also used a uh, double pole as well so I could switch off the uh, negative and the positive to make sure there's absolutely nothing coming through when it's off. And what I also did as well was I 3D printed two boxes for this. You could use uh, adaptable boxes if you don't have a 3D printer, but it just made fitting the components easier for me. And once everything was fitted together and soldered, I uh, had to fit all the wires into the back of that box. And with hindsight, I should have made the box a bit bigger. And also, I probably have drilled a bigger hole through to the bottom of the board rather than just the wee ones. But hey, live and learn. And once everything was fitted to the top, I uh, used just some brown packing tape, doesn't really matter what, just to hold the cables out of the way. Uh, and then I put on this uh, top section here. This was just, uh, I think, 3mm, maybe 4mm birch ply, also A4 in size, but uh, just to match the, the wood on top. And I drilled and countersunk this and then screwed it in place. And as well as screwing it in place, I also got these little rubber feet. Now that's totally optional, but um, given I put this on you know, dinner tables, kitchen worktops, all that kind of jazz, um, it's kind of a good idea just to stop it scuffing and scratching. So they're only a few pence anyway off eBay, but uh, I thought that'd be a useful, a useful addition. Keep everybody happy. <laughs> um, so you can do the same as well. And I, just to say as well, I put a wee uh, washer just with the, the screw there, just so it didn't squeeze the, the rubber foot down too much. And there we have it, all finished, so the one we've fixed on, everything's in place on the top. So uh, pretty much all that remains to be done now is to get a wee test, but uh, just before that I'll quickly run over just one or two of the functions on it. So one of the issues with the spot inputs and outputs are all on the back, so I put in this wee jack power socket so I could route it all on the front. Um, on this wee switch box I put in auxiliary ins so I can plug in DCC and DC power or control from the front uh, using that plug that I just uh, put in there and I can also take it out as well with the plug on the right. Anyway, here we have the rolling road itself. As I mentioned at the beginning, a lot of us have had problems with these DCC concept modules tipping over. Um, so this wee um, Perspex or acrylic uh, band there, that just holds in place. You can tighten it down as well using the screws in the middle there. Um, and that enables you to adjust that tension so that they move easily uh, or they move less simply. After a wee bit of fiddling about, I think that, that centre one there um, is the best one for fine tuning uh, and the outer ones work pretty well for uh, just a kind of rougher, rougher tension setting. Okay, so I've got it all set up now. I've got it rigged up to this Bachmann uh, DC controller uh, and I'm just going to take this uh, wee Class 08 shunter and uh, partial delivery for a wee spin. So I've got it on there, we've just applied some power here and uh, off we go.
So the uh, one of the benefits of having that perspex or the acrylic sheet is that it does help to cancel out some of the wobble that you often get with the DCC concepts, rolling road modules. So that's, that's one benefit, as well as making it all really plug and play. And there we have it. That is a quick overview of the Tesla board working. You can, of course, use uh, DCC control as well as DC. But anyway, back to the table. So I just want to have a really quick overview of, of how this actually works. We've seen it put together. Um, I've talked a little bit about that, but what does it actually do? Well, I 3D printed this box in the middle here and also this retainer here. So you, you can't buy these, but it's dead easy to 3D print or make them out of plastic card or something like that. Um, but this one is really the kind of brains of the operation. Um, so we've got the lock programmer here, we've got the sprog, um, and they both feed into here. Uh, as well as some auxiliary inputs for a, a kind of off-board DC or DC controller. And then this decides what the input is and then it decides what the output is. So is the output the tester, is it the rolling road and programming track, or is it uh, another output? So um, I thought in future, you know, if I wanted to have, say, a, an O-gauge programming track, I could plug that into this and use that separately. So inside here, we've just got three um, three pole um, slide switches, these ones here, so you can select tester, track or auxiliary and the same here, auxiliary, sprog or lock pilot. So at the moment it's the lock pilot coming in and it's coming out again through the auxiliary. If we wanted the lock pilot to go to the programming track, we just flick it across the programming track. And if we wanted the lock um, programmer rather to, to go to the tester, flick it across and that's the tester. It's that simple. It means that we can feed any input into any of the outputs. Um, and uh, the way I've wired it up means I can't have more than one input feeding anything at a time, so I can't overload or short anything out. So um, that's one thing just to, to make sure if you're going to do something like this, make sure that you can only ever have one input feeding in at the same time. Um, but other than that, it's really pretty simple. Um, as you saw in the, uh, the the actual sort of video, construction video, I've hidden all the wires behind, behind this wee panel here, popped some rubber feet on as well, so that it's not gonna damage anything. Uh, and really, it's a really useful little board. I've seen a variety of other people um, out there on uh, social media and other places who've made little boards as well for programming testing. Um, so I'm not gonna say that I've come up with all these ideas. I don't recall seeing anyone else doing this before, but they might have done. So if you think I pinched your idea uh, for all you didn't slip there, then uh, please do accept my apologies and uh, my thanks if, if I did get an idea of you. But anyway, that's it. And uh, hopefully if you do any testing, decoder, installation, anything like that, um, this might give you some ideas for a wee test board set up for yourself. Anyway, I'll leave it there for now. I've got some more videos coming very soon. Um, so if you did like this one, please do give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions about what I did here, please leave them below and uh, I always try to get back to you. Uh, but for now, anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hope you found it good. Hope you subscribed if you haven't already done. Uh, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheerio for now then. Bye-bye.